Hey guys, I'm welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to talk about some ways that I'm using ChatGPT for increasing my productivity and also my output when I'm coding. So here we're going to see some tips and tricks. I'm going to show you how I am actually utilizing ChatGPT to help me with my work when I'm working on my own projects just to increase my productivity and it will save us a lot of time. You can use these tips here in your own personal projects when you're coding, if you just want to look up new information, uh, debug some code, if you just find some code on GitHub, for example, you can go in here and ask ChatGPT to explain what is going on. First of all here, we just want the ChatGPT to actually like create some code. So I often use it as a baseline um, for a code. Let's say we want to train a neural network in PyTorch, then we can set up like the whole training loop uh, with all the high parameters and so on with ChatGPT. And then I can go in, supervise the code, fine tune it, play around with the parameters. I can increase like the layers of the neural network and all those different kind of things. So that is one of the ways that I'm using ChatGPT for. I'm doing this for like pretty much all of my work right now. I have ChatGPT open in a tab um, besides my application. Like if I'm working in a Visual Studio Code, I just have ChatGPT on another monitor. And then I just use that as a supplement so I can increase my productivity and also my efficiency. And actually like, when I'm just sitting here and coding and I'm really like deep focused, I can even like increase my uh, productivity with up to like 10 times because I don't have to like sit and debug uh, for a long time. I don't have to spend hours in debugging. I just take the code, throw it into ChatGPT and it will figure out uh, the bug there is in the code or just to set up like some repetitive work, for example, like setting up training loops, um, symbol architectures in PyTorch and all those different kind of things. I can just make make ChatGPT do it and then I can just supervise it and fine tune it from there. So first of all here, we're just going to see the first trick and that is actually like just to create code and then we're going to use that code. Uh, with ChatGPT, I'm going to show you when I have actually like developed some code myself or with ChatGPT, I have then supervised it, fine tuned it, then I can go in and optimize it with ChatGPT. This is pretty much the process that I'm going to show you right now of like how we can do that, how we can utilize ChatGPT to increase our productivity and also our efficiency. So first of all here, we're just going to have uh, ChatGPT write a function for the bubble sort algorithm. So here, uh, write a function for the bubble sort algorithm in Python. You can basically choose whatever language, but in just a second, I'm going to show you another tip. So here, write a function for the bubble sort algorithm in Python. Sure, here's an implementation, and then we'll basically just get this code snippet of the function. So we first of all, it defines the bubble sort. We take in a list, and then we just want to sort that list uh, with the bubble sort algorithm. So basically here, we'll just sit and wait for a code. While it's writing the code, you can supervise it, see if it's actually like doing what, what you want it to do, because again, you should know like what you're actually like, doing, what you try to implement. Like you can't just use ChatGPT as a black box. You'll know you need to know like the theory behind it. But if I were to like actually like, implement bubble sword, like you can't like you can't remember all algorithms in the whole world and how to set up like different kind of architectures, training functions, uh, computer vision applications, and so on. But when you see it, you you just directly and instantly know that this is actually like, correct. This is how I would set it up as, as well. But if you were to actually like, write the code from scratch, it will take way longer because you will have to like go back in your memory, uh, think about like, okay, how can I implement this? You might do some Google searches of how the bubble sort algorithm ethical X like works because you just forgot um, if you're not using it on a daily basis. And that is pretty much how it works with all the different kind of like, algorithms we are working on, uh, working with, and also the frameworks for, for example, computer vision, AI, deep learning, uh, and so on. So here we basically have our bubble sort algorithm implemented and here I'm just going to verify. So this does actually like do the correct thing. Uh, and then at the end, we're just returning this sorted list. You can just ask it for any implementation of uh, like any code and it will actually like, give you a pretty good um, starting guess. Then you can use that, refine it to your own application, make some changes. You can go in and ask if these changes are actually like uh, good enough. Can you go in and optimize the code? Um, so here I'm basically just going to uh, copy paste the code. We can also use it for, for example, converting um, converting functions from one language to the other. So let's say here uh, that we want to current convert this um, algorithm and this function to C++. We can just directly go in and ask um, ask ChatGPT to do it. Either you can just ask it here, uh, convert this code from Python to C++ and then you can either like go in copy paste the code into this prompt as well but here it actually like has memory so now we have asked it to implement bubble sort in python so now it knows the implementation then we can just directly uh, tell it to convert this code uh, from python to c++ but if you don't like have any chat uh, history here with it um, basically you just need to like copy paste in the code as well and you can just 
copy paste in whatever function you have. If you have written the function yourself, if you just found the function on the internet or uh, or something like that. But here we're just going to hit enter. We can also see we get this test example here where we just have a test list that, that we throw into the bubble sort algorithm and then we have this sorted list. And then we can actually see the output as well. So we just, it also verifies that this function that it implements also works. So here it's just going to convert the code from Python to C++. So again, this might take some time. And again, if you have larger functions, if you're working with larger code bases, it will take a long time to actually just convert code from one language to the other. And you can choose like whatever language in here with ChatGPT. So this will save you a lot of time. This has saved me a lot of time and it's definitely going to like increase my efficiency and productivity way more in the future because this is more like trivial work, uh, repetitive work that we have to do over and over again. And again, even though it's just repetitive work, it is not easy to do since like we have to go back, see if we act like did the implementations correctly. Also, when we're implementing these algorithms, we can have typos, we can have box in our algorithms and so on. But now it's actually like just converted a code here from Python to C++. So this is actually like really good. One of the other things that I'm using is that, for example, I'm researching some ideas for YouTube videos, projects, and so on. You can also just find code and you can hear, go into ChatGPT and ask it to explain what is going on in the code. I'm just going to go up, well, I would have the, the C++, uh, like the Python code um, copy pasted. So here I'm just going to explain this code. And here, let's just go, uh, let's basically just like throw in the whole code here. So we have the, the bubble sort algorithm. So this is the C++ example, but I just tell it to explain this code and then we'll get a really nice explanation. You can do this with whatever function you have, even like just functions that you're written by yourself. It can go in, read the function and then basically just give you an explanation. And this is really helpful if you're just found some code on the internet uh, and some really like complex code, which will take a lot of time to go through. You have to figure out like what libraries, what frameworks are actually like, dependent on each other, what frameworks are they using, how does they like work together and all those different kind of things. So this ChatGPT helps with that as well. So now we just have this full explanation of our act like bubble sort algorithm function that ChatGPT implemented. We can basically just read through it. You can get an explanation of what is actually like going on. And this is really helpful if you just want to know like what is actually like going on um, in like a, a function or you can even like just copy paste in a whole program and it will figure it out, give you an explanation. So this is really good for reviewing code, just finding new ideas and all those different kind of things. So we can also just, just go up and take the code and then we can ask it to optimize the code. So here we're just going to throw in optimize the code. And then we'll basically just hit enter and optimize the code. So here it's just thinking a bit, maybe it doesn't remember the, the C++ code, but let's just see. So here it takes, uh, takes some time to actually like generate a response, but we should get it in just a second. So here we can see that one optimization that can be made to the bubble sort function is to add a check to see if the list is already sorted before entering the loop, because if it's already sorted, we don't need to like run through all these operations. It will just add uh, complexity to our, um, it will just add time complexity to our program. So then we can act like even though it has written the program itself, we can go in and, and optimize it even further with ChatGPT. And this is really efficient and it can help you a lot if you're writing your own code because you might, you're going to write box, you're going to write some code that can be optimized and even like simplified. So again, you can create like a whole function, maybe like 50 lines of code, and then it can act like be uh, boiled down to like 10 lines of code or something like that. And ChatGPT can help you with that as well. So it is really cool. I'm actually really mind blown by the results that we get and just the way that I'm using ChatGPT, it has increased my efficiency and productivity by a lot because here you can just see the capabilities of it and the way I'm actually using it. It is really useful and it's a really nice tool that you can use and help you to program. But again, you need to supervise it. It is not perfect. You definitely need to supervise it. You still need to know what is going on. You can't just use it as a black box. You can't just like have it implement like 10 different kind of functions and then merge them together without knowing like what is actually like going on. But again, this is really nice for like training deep learning models, setting up different kind of like architectures, um, just doing visualizations fast. So let's say we want to plot some results. I can just go in here and ask it to create a function that plots some results. So again, this just helped me. Uh, it increases my productivity. But again, you need to supervise it. You need to actually like make sure you know what is actually like going on. You can just use it as a black box. But this is really nice if you just use it uh, with supervision by yourself. So here we can see the first optimization, and and this is what we have with uh, with the swap. So this is actually like if the if the array is actually like already sorted, 
uh, then we're just going to like sort it before entering the inner loop and then we will just reduce the time complexity of our function. And then also does another optimization here and this is, that is um, another optimization that can be made is to stop the inner loop early if no swaps are made on a particular pass. And then we just add this uh, counter last swap. So this code here is actually like optimized um, more than just the initial, like the initial code that ChatGPT wrote. So this is also one of the other useful things that we can use for optimizing our code because when we're just like implementing our own stuff, we're going to write some shitty code with a lot of bugs and, and it can be optimized a lot. It can even be simplified way, way more. We can also use it for like rewriting code uh, using the correct style. So if you're converting the code from like um, Java to C++ or Python, then you can basically just ask it to rewrite the code and in like Python's naming conventions. So that is also really useful. And also it can just simplify code. You can just go in here and ask it if you can simplify the code. You just ask it again or like tell it to simplify. Simplify the code. And we just hit enter and now it should actually like go in and see if it can simplify the code. So right now the code is written by itself and is also optimized by itself. So maybe it can simplify the code as much as you, if you have written your own function. But again, this is a really nice tool that you can use ChatGPT for. The last thing, one of the last things here that we're going to look at is that we can also ask it for alternatives. So let's say we implement the bubble sort algorithm here instead and we have a specific application, then we can actually go in and ask it, okay, I'm doing this specific case. Are there any alternatives I can take a look at? Maybe the quick sort algorithm will be faster for sorting the array and so on. But here we can see that it acts like does um, optimizations. So we can see that a simplified versions of the bubble sort function that combines the two optimizations I mentioned earlier. Uh, so it's basically just like merging those two optimizations um, instead of having them separately. So this is one of the optimizations that it does. So it can also explore uh, explore alternatives, which is really, really cool because if you're implementing a certain function for a specific application, it might not be the best one. And then you can just ask ChatGPT for alternatives. Then you can test that out relative quickly. We can also ask it to write documentation. So write documentation for the function. And then we'll actually just write documentation for the function. So when you're uploading it to GitHub and all those different kind of things, or other people has to review your code, it will just be way easier if you actually like add this documentation to the function. So here we can just see that it actually like just adds documentation, it adds the comments, it adds like, it should actually like add the inputs to the function as well, the outputs, and also maybe some test case cases um, as well, first of all, here it just explains the, the function. Um, it also, you can see here that it also gives the, the average case time complexity. So this is also really good when you're implementing the functions that it can actually um, explain and like give the time complexity of the function as well. Here we can see that we have a parameter list, a reference to a vector of integers to be sorted. So this is the parameters and this is the return values. So this is actually like really nice documentation that you can just throw in. You can also just um, you can also just specify what function do you actually want to um, write documentation for, and it can actually like implement this block like block comments inside of your function with how does it work, what are the inputs, what are the outputs, and also it will add some test examples. So if you're going to test the function uh, like independently from any other like functions um, in your code, you can also add a specific example for that where you can just directly call the function and verify that this function actually like works. And that is really good if you're working with logic code bases and you have a lot of functions um, going on, you have a lot of functions in your code base and you just want to test them um, one by one or like individually to make sure that they actually like, do uh, what's intended. So also we can track down box. So if you have some code you're written by yourself, uh, you can also ask it to find some box. You can you can verify if you get an error in your program, you can throw it in together with the error and it should also be able to track down box in your program. So this is also really cool because I've spent like many hours just trying to figure out different kind of like different kind of errors. So you run your program, you get an error, um, you get an error and then you can't figure out like what is actually like going on from the error report. Or also, like if you're just debugging, if for example, you're, let's say your program is just working perfectly fine, you just think that you have made a really good function here, it works, uh, you have run through like some test cases, it works as intended, but then there can act like still be bugs and errors in your program that you haven't tested for, or maybe just the implementation is a bug in, in itself, where it can be optimized or simplified in some other different kind of like ways that can reduce the bugs or even like just remove all the bugs in your program. So this, uh, this is also like really cool, and again, 
even though your function runs, just furnish the chat GPT here, make it debug your function and just make sure that you don't have any bugs because if you have a bug running and you just have a really large code, ba code base with a lot of functions going on, then if you just have a bug in one of the functions that can cause like problems for the other functions, it will just be a mess act like debugging, uh, debugging the whole code base. So this is pretty much all for this video here. This is just the ways that I'm using ChatGPT. I'm also using it for like looking up new ideas if I want to find information about some specific things. If I want to know like how the bubble sort algorithm works, um, I can ask ChatGPT to give me an explanation of it. Or if I'm doing like some tracking, how does a Kalman filter work? What are different kind of like variations of a Kalman filter? Computer vision applications, deep learning applications, uh, what architects to, to use and all those different kind of things. So you can basically ask ChatGPT for everything i'm using ChatGPT every day it increases my efficiency and productivity like so so much like i can't even imagine like coding and actually like, just sitting here coding without using ChatGPT anymore because this is a really cool tool so thank you guys for watching this video here and again remember to subscribe button and bell notification under the video also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future i definitely recommend you guys try out this ChatGPT. use it in your own projects when you're coding when you're looking up new information definitely use ChatGPT. you will find that your productivity and also your efficiency will be increased by a lot so i also have tutorials here on the channel with deep learning computer vision and all those different kind of things where we go over the basics so we, you still need to know the basics even though you're using ChatGPT um, because you can't just use it as a black box you need to know what is going on you need to supervise it and then you can basically just combine all of the things together so if you're interested in one of those tutorials i'll link to one of them up here or else i'll just see you next video guys Bye for now.